Hi everyone, Boston Potter here. Um, we're going to be doing this design right here. Um, as you can see, it's been um, it was on the web already, but it was on a much larger plate. So I'm going to give you some choices here. This is the size the pattern is going to be, but if you want to blow it up and put it on the bigger plate, you can. But I've got three pieces here that it fits very nicely on. One is this. Um, the squircle plate. This is the salad plate. It's number 1067. Squircle salad plate. Uh, the dinner plate, the squircle dinner plate is number 1068 that you've seen on the web. Um, I also, which I'm going to do now, is I'm going to do it on an 8 inch tile. This is number 5066. Now, you can see it's the same size as the squircle plate, so it'll be just as nice on actually. I think I'm going to really like it on the tile. So you can, you know, use, you can use e any of these three pieces. Um, these two, the squircle, the tile and the squircle salad plate are the size of the pattern. If you want it in the bigger plate, you can just blow this pattern up and make it bigger. So, so you're going to need the bisque. You're going to need the pattern, the tissue paper, which I've already traced in pencil onto here. And then we'll use it to do the tile after. Now you're also going to need 2314 Black Lab and 2304 which is Green Acres. You will need those in bottles, you know, um, solid. In other words, not in Fun Rider bottles. The Fun Riders, you will need 2395 which is um, Tin Man. You'll need 2329 which is High Ho Silver. You'll need 2303, which is um, Lime Ricky. You'll need 2300, which is Polar Bear. And you'll need 2392, which is Rock and Red. Uh, you will also need, which um, you'll need a, again, a number, um, probably like a number four. This is the number 14 um, round brush and a number six round brush. They don't have to be those exact sizes, but you need a bigger brush and a smaller brush. You're going to need a, a toothbrush for splattering at the end, and you're going to need a pencil and a Sharpie marker for the tracing part of this, okay? So, I've got this tile here, and the first thing I'm going to do, let me push my paint back. You don't need to see that now. So, the first thing I'm going to do with this tile is I'm going to paint couple of coats of black lab with the bigger brush okay now I am going to paint the edge of the tile because if I was doing the plate I'd also do the edge doing the plate or the tile either one of them I'd cover it now the plate it, you can do the back side if you want to but they're both they're all going to get these all get dipped into clear glaze so um you know you can uh you could do if because it gets dipped, you don't have to do the back side of the plate. The tile, of course, I'm not going to do the back side anyway. So now, just do uh, two to three coats. You, you, you really only need two coats on the black lab because it's, because it's black. It goes on really nice and solid. You can also use a soft fan brush if you want to put these coats on, but like I said, I say in all the videos, I like to do nice smooth coats, and I don't find like I have it smooth if I use the soft fan brush because it goes on a little heavy. Okay, now I'm going to do one more coat. It's not going to take much paint. It's prob it's pr not even an ounce of paint to cover this with the black. Um, I know people who are doing send home projects um, it's a little bit difficult to gauge how much paint you're using so you need very little paint um, this black lab as you can see I squeezed that a little I'm getting both coats on with this so that's two coats of the black lab I'd say it was probably a half ounce if that to put two coats on. Now you're going to do this whether you do the plate or the tile. Okay, now this is dry enough to trace the pattern. So you can see this is my pattern. 
I took this, the tissue paper, just plain tissue paper, traced it onto the tissue paper. Now I don't need the pattern. I'm gonna take the tissue, I'm gonna take the pattern and I am gonna put it on my tile here. Try to put it on evenly. Make sure I'm not gonna go over the edge. And now I'm gonna use the marker, which is just a water-based marker, and I'm gonna trace it onto my tile. I'm gonna put away the marker, get rid of this tissue paper. You can use this to trace another one if you wanted to, except you'd have to use a different color marker. Otherwise, you won't know with the pencil, you can trace with the marker and you know where you haven't gone yet. So when you're tracing the pattern. Otherwise, if you wanna use the same tracing paper to do another piece, then you're gonna to have to um, use a different color marker. Otherwise, you're not gonna know where you um, you know, left off. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. So here's my um, my um, tile with all the um, tracing on it, okay? Now, if you get to let this dry, that's the best thing to do. Um, the only other color that you're going to be putting on with a brush will be this Green Acres. So you're going to take a little bit of the Green Acre and you're gonna paint a coat in there using this, the number six brush or whatever brush you like. Now, when you do this, you just need one coat. You just put one coat, one thin coat on the, one kind of even coat on the green, okay? Now, what I did with mine is I go down the middle like this and get that coat on. And then I'll show you how I do the edge because you don't want to make it Again, we're gonna use the word perfect. Um, you don't want it to be perfect. You don't need it to be a perfect tree. Maybe you do. If you know, if you do, then you can do that. Um, so when I get to here, what I do with the brush is I take it and now I'm gonna go a little bit uneven. So it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want my branches to just kind of stick out. You're gonna be going over some of this with the lighter green and the fun writer when it's dry. That's why I'm doing this. This is the part I'm doing first. So you can see I'm kind of just kind of winging it so that, you know, my branches are sticking out a little, but they're not, I'm not perfectly painting in those lines. That was just more of a guide to know where to put your tree. So I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna do this side here. Like I said, you're gonna be covering this and that's why you don't need two coats of this. You're gonna be going on it with other another color. I think I gotta turn it even more. So you're just filling this in. Now, like I said, if you can let this dry, it's probably best because you won't be digging into it. That's it. Um, kind of just covering it, the green. You really only need one coat. I, sometimes I just go and go over it again because I just do, but it's fine. See, just like that, that's it. So you see how I just kind of pulled it out, um, you know, at the, the branches any way you want. Okay, that's it on the green, that's it on the um, brushing. 
Uh, the rest is done with Fun Riders, which um, I'm going to start with this, um, the uh, light gray, which is um, Tin Man. Tin Man is $23.95, and I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to do this, the inside of this, um, you know, the window here. So, as you can see, I'm just filling it in, kind of going in between the trees a little bit, but you don't have to worry about it too much. And while I'm doing this, you can see that I'm holding the tip, I'm holding the fun rider sideways. I'm not going uh, straight up like this. I'm holding it sideways so it comes out nice. Uh, I could even get really thin lines if I wanted to, but I'm really filling it in. So, but I'm holding it. The reason I'm holding the, the fun rider on its side is because if I hold it up, I'm probably going to dig into the piece. This way here, I just float the paint on. Just float the paint color on, okay? When you put, when you go to your, your when you're putting on the um, lime ricky green over the tree, you'll be kind of going a little bit on top of this. By that time, this will be dry. Okay. That's it on that one. Now, I'm going to do the red at the top. Okay, rock and red. Same thing with the Fun Rider. Now, most of the truck is red, so this is going to be the next thing I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of gray in this window. In each window. You can do this dark gray or the light gray. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you can see what I've got done so far. Now I'm going to start with the red. Now I'm going to leave a space because I don't want to have to outline it. So wherever you see your lines, it's messed up. Um, wherever you see those lines, you're going to leave a space. So that's going to be black when it comes out of the kiln without having to outline. So as you can see, I will show you it closer after. I don't mind that this is wet and this is wet. I can do this right away because I'm not butting the colors up against each other. I'm leaving that space to make it look like it's an outline. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. Again, holding it sideways so that, you know, I'm not digging into the color because you don't want to dig into the color, especially when it's still damp like mine is. So you want to just float the color on top, leaving that space. I will show you a closer view of it in a minute. You see how I'm just floating it across? Not scraping the bisque or the black. I'm not scraping into the black. And this is only one coat. That's it, because you got because you're using this red. Okay, so now you can see. You can see that how I left the space in the in the in between the gray and the black. So I'm gonna leave a space everywhere. So on here, this is my white line. I didn't have to trace that yet because the white's gonna go over the red, any of the white. So now when I'm doing this side here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that space so that, um, I'm going to leave a space in between and I'll show you that. solid red okay see how that's just solid red just leaving that space there you go over here and do this side um, let's see
this side of the truck does have a little bit of red. As you can see, um, I don't know if you can see this while I'm painting. It's kind of the uh, the shadow, the the light, the highlight from the lighting is not um, helping me any here. <laughs> as far as trying to show the glossy plate, because that's what happens with it. Okay, now you can also do the um, the circle, which um, I got the line messed up here. Okay, you can also do this circle around, because it's going to be red around that gray area. Just be careful not to, you know, go into the gray. If you do go into the gray, wait till it dries and you can clean it up later. See, now you talk about being imperfect. You can see that I'm going to have to clean this up later because I got this line should have been up here and I messed up. So there you go. Not perfect. I'll fix that later when it dries. Okay, now you've got another line here, another thing here where it's going to also have the, um, you're going to have the same thing where you, you're going to leave that space where the line is. When this is dry, you can go back and you can scrape things, you can do things, whatever you want to do if you want to make it, you know, clean it up or fix it up because you didn't like the way you did something like that mistake there. I can clean that up after it's dry. But don't try to do it while it's wet because it ain't going to work out very well for you. Now, this whole area got to be red, okay? This here, this line here, you really didn't even have to trace it because... It's really all going to be red. You are going to put that in in white later. So you're going to just do the whole thing in red. So you're going to start going. But when I did this in red, this is what I did. Do you see Do you see how you got all this black in here? I just left spaces. I just left, I scratched just so that there was like little spaces in there as I'm doing this. You'll see as I'm doing this. So I'm holding it sideways. Now I'm going to go across. Where, so to make sure I leave my space, I'm going to do this top spot first. And then, now I'm going to leave some spaces. I'm going to ignore, remember, I'm going to ignore that line there. In fact, because it's going to be white, I'm going to make sure the red goes over it. Because I want the red to go on something. You want to go to your edge. Now, when I'm inside here, this is where I want to leave some black spaces because I want it to look a little antique looking. Even though it's done like this, I I want it to look a little bit, um, you know, scattery. Like it has some um, faults on the truck, like some rust or whatever. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna do this edge because I want to get that done. I'm going to still go this way with the, as you can see, I'm doing. I'm filling in after. I'm trying to go get my edge done so I don't mess that up. Okay. It seems like a lot of red, but on this smaller plate or a tile, it's going to be, it's a lot easier than, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want, like if, you know, when you're doing the big plate, you might want to even take the tip off to do it because you're going to, It'll take you a while to do it. It's going to be a little, lot more time consuming with, with the fun writer doing it this way. But on the other hand, you don't have to do a lot of coats. You're only doing, you know, you're only doing a few, you're only doing one coat because you got the, um, the fun writer, you know. So it's, it, when the fun writer, when you're using the fun writer, it looks like there's a lot of coats going on there. 
Now, here we go again with the back where I'm going to put tree deliveries on here. So I don't want to do too much scattering on this. So I'm going to mostly fill it in. Okay. You might need a half full fun writer bottle at least or a full fun writer bottle you won't use it all on this small plate but just do sections at a time every once in a while I shake it down because I want to make sure I don't get air bubbles coming out because um, that can happen Now, the only thing about leaving these little black things in there, make sure you're not leaving them this way, okay? that's It doesn't matter if you're making it solid, whether you go this way or this way, but it will matter if you're trying to make, um, you know, lines throughout. If you're trying to make those little, like, um, sort of like dents in the truck or the, look, make the truck look like it's peeling of paint or something, then you're going to have to go this way to do that. Again, you see how how side it's it's very much to the side. It's not holding it up like that, and floating the color in. I like doing this because it's like to me it's like coloring. So I like fill it in. The fuller the Fun Rider bottle is, the easier it is to squeeze the paint out. So it's nice to have a full Fun Rider bottle because the more you have to squeeze it, the more your hand gets, you know, tense. So um, because you're doing a lot of this, so you know, you, you might want to just like make the Fun bottle, fill the Fun Rider bottle. Okay, now the edges here now you on this here i want to make sure i leave a space right here to show that black line so i'm going to fill in the whole edge of this first i'm going a little bit you can see how i did that now because i want to leave some of those scattered lines i'm gonna have to, and i gotta go this way now I'm gonna do it across. This is how I did these. Because I do want to make it kind of look rusted or paint peeling, and that's the only way to make the paint look peeling with this type of technique. Okay, same thing on the other side. You know, go around the edge, you leave your space right in there between the back of the truck and these little bumpers. My little thick lines, now I'm gonna do this again. Hold it close up so you can see it. Now, that's what I've got so far. So do you see how I got these little lines? Um, some lines up there. This is where your um, tree deliveries or your name, you could put the O'Hearns or the, you know, whatever. Whoops. Um, you know, you could put something in there. You can write your name, your family name on there. I just didn't have that, so I, um, I didn't do that. I put tree deliveries, but you can put any, you can put, you know, Mary's tree deliveries if you want. So you can do something like that and that's fine. Okay, so now that you're done with the red, I would say for now. Um, now I'm using the polar bear to fill in this uh, license plate. You can write something on the license plate too. So you can put tree deliveries and put something else on the license plate. I put happy holidays 
as you can see, when I'm doing this, I'm going to leave that space again. Float the color in. I'm not going to leave anything on here. Be patient. It takes a little patience doing it this way. Make sure it's even. Okay, now I'm going to take the darker gray, which is 2329, and now I'm going to put through the back bumper. And when I do the back bumper, you see this was solid, but the back bumper is going to be, um, I'm going to do again, I'm going to leave some sp scattered spaces. So on the bumper. I just left a few on here. You can see how this this is. Um, see how you got the, the, like the scattered. That's what I mean by the scattered spaces. So I left a few on the bumper too. And I also added, I'm going to add in some um, of the lighter gray uh, just to, you know, give it, you know, a little bit more color. You don't have to do that. It does help, um, definitely helps when you can leave spaces like this too because you, know, you don't have to fill it in as much. A little quicker and easier to do. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to take some of this 2395, um, the lighter gray, and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, that in there while it's still wet. I'm just floating a little color in there, here and there. It's not really anything special. That's it. It's that simple. It's so quick and simple that you probably could miss it. So I'll show you again when I get on this side. It's easy to miss. That was how fast I did that. It is easier to do it on this smaller plate than the big plate. Um, you know, the big platter. If you were having a big class, I mean, it'd be great to do, but um, it's definitely easy to do it on this small plate or the tile. It's, you know, a lot more doable. It's a lot quicker. Okay, again, here we go. I'm going to take the, the lighter gray and just add a little bit in there. It'll show up. Okay, now I'm going to hold that up close so you can see it. Do you see how I did that with the gray, the lighter gray? You'll see it in here. See it? The lighter gray. Now you can use that or not use that. It's up to you. So now the tires. We obviously cannot put black. That's why I didn't, we, I don't have a black fun rider. I don't need to do the black. Um, I'm not going to do this black, these tires, obviously, because this is black. So, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. So what I did was I took, I believe, yes, the darker gray, okay, and I left this area of the tire black. So I did this. I went around like this to leave that solid pot black. And I kind of went this side solid. Then I did this, okay. Now, instead of filling the whole tire in because the tire is black, you're gonna do some lines like I'm doing here. That's gonna give you that tire look, okay? 
I'm going to do it with this side. So I'm filling in this side, the left side, making like a U. And then I'm doing the bottom. You can do the bottom in the edge like this. But then you just want to put like lines coming up this way because like I said, that you want the tire to kind of mostly be black and that's gonna make it look more like a tire. Okay, do you see that? So it looks like the tire. Now, now I'm gonna, it, it, I'm, everything's a little still wet, but if it was drier, it would be easier to show you this. But this is the tree now. I'm gonna go upside down on the tree because I wanna take it this way, okay? And I don't want to touch any of my wet area. Um, this is even still a little damp. So what I'm going to do with this, what I did is you can see the tree here. Do you see how it's um, it's got it, it's green underneath? I even left a little black showing through, which I didn't. I kind of solid did it solid here, so you can do either or. And then I just kind of you know came down with lines of the lighter greens, you still see the darker green underneath and some black. So it, it, it kind of is kind of a cool, neat look. So I am gonna, like I said, I gotta float it on. Now, because this ain't that dry, I'm gonna have to be careful, definitely careful not to scratch in. Now, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna show you this because the way I'm doing this, I'm not putting tons of lines in here. I'm just kind of, I'm not solid, you know, I don't want it solid because I want to, I want to show that green underneath. So I don't want it solid. So I'm just kind of putting lines, but very lightly. I, this is a very light touch. Like I said, when you do this part, you can go into your green, you know, go whichever way you're comfortable with the piece. But if you have the opportunity to let it dry, let it dry because it is easier to let it dry first. So you're not wrecking anything because I tend to want to put my hand down. Um, because of the video, I'm not going to let it dry. It's going to take too long, so I'll... You could you could listen to the hairdryer, but um, I try not to use a hairdryer on fun writers. When I'm using fun writers, I try not to use a hairdryer because if you get too close to this thickness of color, it could, you know, it's it's not good to, um, if I was to hold the blow dryer to it while it's really, really wet, and I held it close, it could get little cracks in there in the paint, and it stays that way. So if you are gonna use a hair dryer when it's wet, hold it back, hold it up back and back of the uh, piece. I'm gonna move this as glaring. Okay, so, now you can see where I got um, I got it down to see how I'm still going down with lines. I'm doing the middle of the tree. Now when this is all dry and you do this, it's a lot easier to do this. When it's wet, it's a little bit tougher because it's a real then it's a really light touch. Now I'm going over here. You have to squeeze the bottle a little. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, nothing will be coming out. You'll be scraping. So I get this side done. As you can see, it didn't matter about my green. Remember how I said it was just a guide? Well, that's why you're going to kind of go into your gray. Which is okay. Just getting my edges of my tree done first. Because it's not dry, it's hard not to go into the other color, as you can see. Um, that's why if you have the chance, let it dry a little.
the whole idea is to make it look like branches in the tree. And you can go in different directions. I just kind of keep it all going this direction. But a tree sometimes has the branches going in other directions. Okay, so that's my tree. That's it. Take a look at it. Make sure, you know, you got what you want on there. I'm going to hold it up a little bit close to for you to see it. You see it? So it looks like this. And then I'm going to put some snow on it after it's dry. So... What I'm gonna do with this is it's done other than the snow and the white. So I'm gonna do the snow and the white um, last. I'm gonna let that dry because for me to do the snow and the white and show you that right now, it's, it's too hot. So I'm gonna let this dry like we do in the cooking shows. And as um, soon as it's dry, the video will probably be connected and it'll look like it dried very quickly and I can just put the white on. Alrighty? Okay, now that this is dry, you can put your pattern, if it's dry enough, you can put your pattern down and you can write the, retrace the tree deliveries. Okay, you can retrace this if you want to. If you're going to put something else, don't worry about it. But now, I'm going to put this back on so I can write tree deliveries. Um, so just trace it. Again, it's going to bleed through and it's going to fire off. I'm using it with, I'm doing it with this um, red marker. Okay, now, that's that. Um, you can see it. Now I'm going to take the white, the polar bear, and I'm going to carefully, you can't see it that good, but you can see that, um, you can see it enough to, try, to do it. Now you want to put this line on a little bit heavy. Go slow. You can do it with a brush or um, a fun writer. The fun writer is going to be more solid with one coat. Otherwise, you can put, you know, maybe do it a little heavy or two coats with a brush. You can make this as thick or as thin as you want. Okay, then you can write um, tree deliveries. I wrote it in white because I think it goes good with the red. So that's the other thing you can do. If you'd like, you can put in put a smaller tip on. If you want it a little, your lines a little thinner. Now. You can see how some of that red marker bl bled into the, the white, which will fire out. So that's all you have to do with that. Now, as far as the tree goes, what you want to do is look, if you want to put snow on it, make it look like it has snow. So I kind of just made some loops, thick loops, going around anywhere you want. Um just random. I just kind of did it random to make it look like snow. I'm mean, going to splatter it anyway with snow, so it doesn't really matter, but just kind of wanted it to look like, oh, it's got snow on the branches. I could be like Bob Ross and say, oh, look at the pretty snow. 
do this and get some pretty snow on your tree. Anyway, it's more or less just getting some snow in the tree. You, you got to kind of play with it a little and do what you think is, is good. Okay, so that's about it. Other than doing the, um, the splattering. Okay, so like I said, you can put happy holidays. You can put your family name. You can put whatever on, on the back of the truck, which I'm not going to do right now. But um, So now that's done other than, oh, I did take, while you weren't looking, I took the uh, toothpick and see where there's in here. I just scraped, scratched out a couple of little lines just to, you know, in the mirror area, okay? Because the mirror is facing this way. Now, you can either paint some little black lines or you can take a toothpick and scratch a little out. Um, that's it. Um, I noticed also that on this one, you know, I had some scratchy looks up here too. You can do that if you want to. You know, I, I put one right here. Um, I, I did it solid on this one, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do that if you like. Um, now, uh, I'm going to take my palette back over here, and I'm going to squirt out a little bit of white polar bear, and I'm going to get my toothbrush, and I'm going to stand up because I always stand up to do this. Oop, that's not the toothbrush. You know, use your toothbrush to put it in your paint. Can you see this? Okay. And then splatter. I kind of hold it a little bit close. Um, it's a personal preference of how much splatter you want, how much snow you want. If you want a blizzard, you do a lot. If you just want it to be a little bit, um, you know, just do a little. But the thing is, when you first load your brush, if you splatter it right away, like with a heavy hand, you're going to get bigger snowflakes. If you keep, which I try to do, I try to get some big ones on there first. And that's how I get, you can see the big ones on there. Now, if I want smaller ones, then I'll just kind of keep going with a little bit of you know, just keep going while my brush is drier and then put them on and you'll get smaller ones. It's when you load your brushes, you're going to get those big ones. Um, you know, the big flakes. And that's basically it. I did have, I just noticed a line that I missed because I had to put it back in. But I didn't fix this yet, so I'm not going to put it over that side. But I also had a little line right here. This is not necessary. As you see, you probably couldn't even tell I did it. Now, when I fix this one, I'll put that line in, but I got to fix that side. So that's it, guys. Uh, simple as can be. Well, I say that it's a little time consuming, but it's, you know, there's very little color. There's not much colors in it. And um, I think it's pretty easy because it's all done in Fun Writers. It's like coloring in a coloring book to me anyway. So that's it. So um, I will catch you later.